Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've asked Phineas to give the message this morning. He said no. What's wrong with him? Uh, he has a very limited vocabulary. Right? He just doesn't think that you guys can keep up with him. Right? Okay. You think, are you good now? We're ready to go back? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, each of you, uh, on your bulletin, flip it over to the back side where there's room to write. Anybody need a bulletin? Yes, no, maybe. All right, get your pens ready. Just off the thatch. <laughs> All right. 100% honesty. Okay? Nobody's going to see this but you. So don't look at your neighbors, what they're writing. Okay? Um, I want you to write down the first thing that comes into your mind. Ready? Christmas. Some of you, nothing came into your mind, and that scares me. <laughs> Satch? All right. Now, I read something the other day that I, I thought was a little bit interesting. Uh, one of my friends from college, uh, they have four kids, um, two of which are in college and two of which are at home. And uh, she put, this friend of mine wrote something to the effect that uh, December the 25th is starting to feel like a deadline. And I thought, that's really actually kind of sad. You know? Um, the fact that something that we celebrate has become so objectified, so commercialized, that it becomes a stressor rather than a, a festival, a, a festivity, a party, a joy. Um, I've said before, uh, I love the Christmas season. I love the excitement that is in the air. Um, the lights, the twinkles, the, the music, I, you know, I, I just, I love the Christmas season. Um, my grandchildren helped us decorate this week. Uh, and by grandchildren, I mean Shay. <laughs> my job was to keep uh, the rowdy ones from causing issues, so uh, I pretty much hung out with Phineas all day. Um, but they... Got the, got the decorations up, the tree up and decorated, and, and uh, stockings are all up. Um, the Bethlehem village is up, and the grandkids actually helped with that one. They got to put the people in the village. I still have to go through and find out if any little people actually made it into the village, because they, they have these toys, and they just randomly appear all over our village. So uh, you got to keep your eyes open. Uh, by the way, did anybody notice our nativity set? Now, the, the old timers here, you guys already know what's going on. But for those that are new here at Jesus Community Church, did you notice our nativity set over there? Yes. Yes. Did you notice what is different about our nativity set? The wise men. They're over there. They're over there. And that's for a reason. Okay? Because the wise men were not at the stable. Okay. They came to Mary and Joseph's house up to two years later. Now, we don't know exactly the timing of that because the star appeared two years. We don't know if the star presaged his birth or if uh, that, that was something that God put in place before his birth. We, we really don't, the, the Bible doesn't give us the timing of that exactly. But we know 
that uh, they came from the East. Uh, a little bit of history for you. Why would people in the East, which today would be modern day Iraq and Iran, why would they come from that area to Israel? What, what, I mean, why would they have any clue about one born king of the Jews? Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, the exile. The, the 70 years that Israel spent in exile, and they were uh, uh, all throughout Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. But we know a lot of them ended up in what is modern day Iran and Iraq. Uh, we also know that there was uh, great wisdom in the Jews at that time, not just with Daniel. Uh, we, we know Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but we also know. Um, Okay, he just his name just ran away from my brain. Um, Hadassah's uncle Mordecai. Mordecai was also a wise man. Uh, it is my belief, and, and a number of other people, that when the Jews were exiled into these areas and they, they gained such prestige, um, their teachings were, were brought into the lore of those kingdoms, those empires. And so, um, why these three guys, they're not Jews, why would they care about the king of the Jews? What, what difference would that make? Well, because you remember the promise, the first promise was that the woman would bear a child who would strike the serpent's head, okay? We understand that God chose the Jews, that through them, he might bless the world, that he might call all people to himself, okay? So as far as, as the wise men, um, what are their names? We don't know. As a matter of fact, we don't even know if there were three. Could have been more. We don't know. We know there were three gifts that were given, but we don't know how many of those wise men gave gifts of gold or frankincense or more. We, we don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us. You know why? Because we don't need to know. We need to understand why they were there. We don't need to understand who they were. Okay? So, our wise men are set over uh, to the east, if you'll notice. I, I love that attention to detail. Thank you for whoever did that. It's not like I, I don't harp on that every year, but you know. Um, so, um, anybody notice anything different about me? You got my hair cut. Really? Well, you saw it. You've got better eyes than most people. Uh, no, I intentionally changed. Because when Jesus came, he did not come like Israel was expecting. Okay? When Jesus came, they were expecting the line of the tribe of Judah. They were expecting a king not unlike David, who was going to uh, put Israel in a place of preeminence. He was going to to uh, establish again the line of David, and he was going to make uh, Israel, specifically Judah at that time, Judea, uh, he was going to oust the Romans and all the foreigners, and he was going to reestablish the kingdom, and he was going to reign forever, and, and they were expecting the guy coming on the horse with the sword, not the baby in a manger. Now, did God need the angels to convince the shepherds? Not really, but kind of yes. Okay. Now, we see that uh, Jesus is born in Bethlehem, the town of David, uh, because he is of the lineage and line of David. Um, we see that uh, Bethlehem is a sheep town. Okay. Uh, that's where they would, would keep the sheep, especially the sheep that were chosen for the sacrifice. They was, were, were all in the area of Bethlehem. It was, it was there pretty much solely for the purpose of shepherds and sheep. So uh, Jesus was born there. Um, when we were in Israel, we got to see uh, a shepherd's grotto 
uh, for those of you that are like me and didn't know what a grotto is, it's a, evidently it's a cave. Uh, and that's where the, the, the shepherds would put the sheep at night and then they would sleep uh, in the outer part of the cave so the sheep couldn't get out. Um, now, if you were a shepherd and you'd had a long day following the sheep all around uh, the pasture because they do not have pasture like we do, they don't have fences, they don't really have grass. I'm not kidding. Um, how those animals lock, survive is amazing to me because I look at it and I, I see nothing but desolation. But there is sufficient whatever there for the needs of the sheep. Okay? Um, and, but the problem is you couldn't just turn them loose in a pasture and let them go. You had to take them on certain areas and you would walk certain patterns throughout the day and, and the, the sheep would pick and, and whatever was there, so with the goats. Um, but that meant you had to follow them. You had to be out there with them uh, for their protection uh, and to lead them back uh, at night when it was time to, to put them up for the night. Um, so if someone were to come to you and you'd walked uh, oh, by the way, something else about the area, there is no flat area there. The flats are on the sides of the mountains, okay? Everything is up and down, all right? So when you're out there walking with them, you're, you're not just going flat areas, you're going up and down all day. So you've, you've gone up and down all day with sheep and uh, maybe had to, to chase off a bear, maybe had to fish one of the... the animals out of a, a, a briar or something like that. Um, time to rest. You're sitting down before uh, you, you go to sleep. The animals have quieted. Some guy rides up on a horse and says, hey, there's a king born in Bethlehem. What are you going to do? And quite honestly, me, I'm going to say, oh, that's nice. Good night. <laughs> um, now, if you guys have more energy, and wanted to get up and truck all the way down to Bethlehem, that's up to you. But I had that one stupid sheep that always goes into the same area and always gets stuck, okay? And nobody wants to sacrifice it, okay? So, um, but now, now look at it this way. An angel appears. And then with the angel, the heavenly host appears. And they start to declare praises. Now, of the two, which would motivate you more? I tell you what, if I saw an angelic being appear and, and speak to me, hey, this is what's going on, you need to go here, and then he reinforced that with the entire heavenly host, I would take that matter under consideration. <laughs> okay? No, seriously, we'd be like, all right, we're going. And it says, hey, let's make haste. Let's go see this babe that is born. Okay? They were excited. Now, I don't know. My brain doesn't work like a lot of people's. I understand that. And I'm sorry if, if I, I go places that you guys don't go. But I always wonder, what happened to the sheep? I mean, this is their livelihood. This is, this is their life. Did they draw straws? Because quite honestly, I would not be content being the one left behind. Okay? What happened to the sheep? No idea. I fully plan on getting to heaven, finding out each of those shepherds' names, and asking them. Hey, what did you do? What happened? Okay? Um, but, but they got so excited, they got pumped, and they, they ran down to Bethlehem. Now, in Bethlehem, they found the baby lying in a manger. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into my personal understanding of that, but uh, I, I, I don't believe they were in an inn. They weren't at the Holiday Inn Express. Um, I don't think that's what Scripture actually indicates. But we do know for a certainty that Jesus would lay in a manger. They wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger. Okay, um, Probably because there was fresh hay in there and it was a warm place to keep him um, and the shepherds show up to see this babe that God had sent now 
we call the Son of God Jesus. Uh, and and uh, if we backtrack, the Hebrew, the, the name that he was actually giving was Yahshua. Okay? God saves. Okay? And the, the promise was that God would bring a Messiah who would save the people. All right? And so mothers would often name their male children Yahshua, which we then translate to transliterate to Joshua, and then through the Greek it became Jesus, by extension to us. Um, they would name their son Yeshua in the hopes that he would be the one that would rescue Israel, that would deliver the Jews. Okay? Now, Jesus is the Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach. The one who saves. The anointed one who saves. Okay? This was declared by angels um, to Mary, by uh, John when he was still in the womb, when Mary came into Elizabeth's presence and John leapt. And the first person uh, to acknowledge that outside of Mary would have been Elizabeth. Um, interesting to me that God chose to reveal his divine plan to women first. Okay? Um, women don't ever let anybody convince you that you are less than. Okay? You are not less than. Different, absolutely, but not less than. Okay? So, uh, then the, the, through the uh, angel Gabriel, words are spoken. Um, one of the guys that I think does not get nearly enough credit in all of this is Joseph. Can you imagine the faith that he had to have? Um, his wife, the, 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 the process for uh, a marriage was that the parents would agree uh, to whatever was going to, to take part of the transaction. And then the, uh, the potential husband and the potential bride, uh, groom and bride, they would be betrothed where they would say their vows in front of the people. And at that point they were considered married except that they had not consummated the marriage. Okay? And then the husband would go and he would build a house. He would build a place that when it was done and his father gave his approval, then he would go and get the bride out of her family's house and bring her to his house. And then there would be uh, the, the, the bridegroom that would stand outside the door, the, the attendant that would stand outside the door, and when the marriage was consecrated, then the celebration began. Okay? And so Mary's in this first part of this. She's been betrothed, they've spoken the vows, and she's pregnant. Now, um, there are a number of theologies out there, there are a number of views out there that poo-poo the virgin birth. And that concerns me, and it should concern you. Because if we are willing to overlook the work of God in conceiving a child, how can we trust that he could actually save us from our sins? I mean, which is the greater difficulty, really? I mean, God created us out of the dust of the earth and his breath. Okay? Not really that big of a problem for him to uh, conceive a child in Mary. All right? So, so when people start telling you, no, the, the virgin birth, that probably wasn't so, it's so. Okay? It's so because the Bible tells us it's so. All right? We are not called to uh, positions of intelligence and understanding. We're called to positions of faith. And when we get that faith, when we are in that place of faith, then the Spirit can open our eyes to the truth. And then we gain understanding. Okay? It doesn't work the other way around because our brains cannot comprehend the things of God without the Spirit of God. Okay? That's, that's how it works. I don't know why he chose to do it that way, but that's how it works. So... Um, the Messiah is born, and, and the angels declare that he is born. Then the shepherds come down, and, and they, uh, they profess, and, and Mary's sitting there looking at this, and she's storing all this up. Okay? Now, 
uh, I heard a, a pastor speak this week, and I thought it was kind of interesting because uh, he was talking about the song, Mary, Did You Know? Okay. Um, it's an incredible, incredible uh, song. Mark Lowry and, and uh, um, oh, another gentleman wrote the song. Uh, it's been redone a number of times. Uh, it's an incredible song, but basically asking the question, Mary, did you know who this child that you're bearing, that, that, that you've delivered, do you know all the things that he's going to do? And this man said, yeah, of course he did. Of course he did. I mean, she had the word. She, she had the Hebrew Bible. I don't think she did. Because I think she was still thinking about the king on the horse with the sword. Okay? And I think that's why when Jesus started his ministry, she and her other sons and daughters went to take Jesus home. Hey, this is not the way this is supposed to work. You got, you got to come out of there. Can you imagine having him as a bigger brother? <laughs> See, I had it easy because my bigger brother, you know, uh, Scott was the oldest, and then Todd, and and Todd kept a lot of the attention on himself, which was great for me because he almost always got blamed for stuff I did. Okay, <laughs> now it didn't work out so great all the time because sometimes he would know I did it, and then I'd get it lumped by him. Okay, but, but Todd, uh, Todd tended to be more boisterous, more outgoing, more loud uh, than I was. Um, so it was easy for me to go, yeah, you know, okay, yeah, he's the oldest. Uh, but could you imagine <laughs> when your parent comes into the room, they say, all right, who broke that? You couldn't blame Jesus. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, Then you got to wonder, did Jesus rat out his siblings? Now, see, I told you, my brain goes places that yours don't. Okay. So, anyway, let's let's step back away from that for a moment. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> see now my brain just just took off. All right, back back to history. So Jesus is born. I don't think Mary had a clue. Uh, as to the entire nature of what he was going to do. Um, I think she, you know, with the birth, um, the, the, the pregnancy, the birth, the delivery, the time when he was 12 and, and they left him in the temple. Um, you know, a lot of you that didn't have a lot of kids can't understand how that can happen. Those of us that had a lot of kids can very easily understand how it could happen. Um, I, I almost made it out of going to the dentist one day. Uh, we were watching TV and mom said, we're going to the dentist. I just stayed where I was. I didn't move. Everybody got up. Everybody brushed her teeth. Everybody left. Uh, after the door was closed, I walked out and I watched my mom pull out of the driveway and she went made it about 10 feet and the car stopped. I guess it was at that point she actually counted the kids. Okay. Uh, now, I would laugh at her and say, ha, ah! but we did the same thing with Benjamin. We did find him, though. We did find him. Um, so, I mean, you, you think about it. We know that she had at least four other male children and at least two female children. Okay? So, uh, with all of them and all the busyness that's going on, and they were traveling in a group, probably with other relatives of theirs, um, and, and then they get a day out and they're like, hey, hey, is Jesus with you? Is, is Jesus with you? And that's exactly what happened with us, with Benjamin. We were at my brother's house and we were getting ready to go to dinner. Uh, there's 20 plus of us in about six different cars. And as we start to pull out, I'm looking and, and you never knew whose kids were going to end up in your car. Okay. And we noticed that Benjamin was not in the car with us. And Christy said, well, did you see him? Uh, uh, no. No, I don't think I did. So we, my brother lives on a cul-de-sac, so we made the entire loop, pulled up to the first car. Hey, is Benjamin with you? No. Nope. Hey, is Benjamin with you? No. Nope. Hey, no. Nope. Drove all the way back around. He was still back in the room playing a video game. <laughs> totally oblivious that everybody else had left. What was the game, Benj? It's a tank game. It was a tank game, battle tank. He didn't even notice we were gone. Uh, but, but I can understand that with, with Mary and Joseph. And, and then they go back and they find him amazing, the scholar. Amazing the wise men of the day with his insight into God's word. So let's let's kind of bring around this. Um, we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Um,
Wednesday is the day, the December 25th. We have chosen to commemorate that day. Probably not the day he was born. That really doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that, uh, like I said a couple weeks ago, we remember that when God sent his son, he sent him not only as fully God, but also fully man. Okay? He was subject to every temptation that we are. Every one of them. And yet he overcame them. Okay? We celebrate his birth because it keeps us in touch with his humanity. Okay? We celebrate because we remember that in this one unique instance, uh, God created a life in a way that had never been done before and will never be done again. Okay. Now, we, we see that Paul associates him with Adam because the first Adam had a unique birth. Uh, so did the first Eve. Um, but, but when the first Adam came, God created him out of the dust and he breathed life into him. Uh, no other man was created that way. Uh, when Adam was made, his father was God. Okay? When Jesus was created, his father was God. Uh, Joseph did an incredible job. Uh, that, that I know that man, chosen of God. Can you imagine being chosen to be put into that place? To take by faith that God had created this life in, in your life. Okay. So, Joseph is... Uh, commended uh, in the Protestant Church. I think we do a disservice to Mary. Uh, I think the Catholic Church and a number of other uh, churches go too far in their veneration of Mary. They, they've almost given her uh, demigod status. Uh, I think we do too little. Because of all the women that will ever be created, she was chosen out of all of them. Okay. For whatever reason, God chose her. Uh, and we remember when, when God chose David to be king over Israel, what he said to Samuel was, man looks on the outside, I look on the inside. So Mary had something that, that God liked. Okay? Um, so I think, you know, when, when we're celebrating, we need to remember not just the birth, but we need to remember the whole procession of how this thing came about because Joseph and Mary stood in a place that none of us will ever have to stand. Okay? They, they faced ridicule. They faced rejection. Uh, she even faced stoning. Okay? Um, so, um, as we celebrate, and celebrate we should, okay? Um, we need to focus why we're celebrating. We need to bring that back into focus. When, when, uh, when you know, Christmas is a whole lot more exciting when you have kids. Okay? Um, the, the, their excitement is contagious. They're, they're you know, and they're, they just stand there and they shake because they're so excited. You know, and then you say, go, and, and it's like letting loose the hounds. Whoosh, off they go. Um, I think we should be excited. I think we should even be more excited because we understand the gift that is being given to us as an eternal gift, okay? And, and they're looking at the boxes and the wrappings and the ribbons, or in my house, the bag. Um, you know, the, the bag with the, the tissue paper falling out of the top. Um, we should have a better understanding of what we're celebrating. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition here for just a moment. Um, there's something I want to do. Um, on your thing you wrote down, what is the first thing? Uh, that you think of when you say Christmas. Um, I don't want you to feel like it's bad. Okay? Because when I think of Christmas, I think of lights. Okay? I don't know why. Lights. Okay? Well, I do know why. Because there's more lights at Christmas than normal. The normal lights go off and the Christmas lights come on. Um, those aren't bad. There's nothing wrong with lights. In and of themselves, they, they just are. Okay? It's the importance that we put on them that can lead us into problems. Okay? Uh, gifts, there's nothing wrong with gifts. Absolutely nothing wrong with gifts. If there were anything wrong with gifts, then, then why did Mary receive the gifts from the Magi? 
You know, why? Uh, she, she, she would have rejected them if they were bad. They're not bad. Okay? Uh, I, I, I don't know. How many of you have ham for Christmas dinner? Just put your hand up. Or, or sometimes have ham. I mean, you know, okay. Uh, wow, okay. See, I, I never, I didn't have ham growing up. Um, we celebrated Christmas Day with my mom's family, the afternoon and the dinner with my mom's family. And, and my grandmother was Italian, so it was usually like lasagna or monogoite or something like that. And, and then maybe on the side there might have been other meats, but who cared about that? Um, so, ham. Wow, I'm not a big fan of ham unless it's between two slices of bread. Um, isn't it funny, though, that uh, we, we put all of this emphasis into a particular day of the year, and it's not just believers, I, I'm, let's just call it uh, humanity in America, that we, there's all this emphasis on these things, and that there's not necessarily, they're not bad necessarily. There's nowhere in scripture that it says we shouldn't celebrate. There's nowhere in scripture that it says we shouldn't have a big meal. There's nowhere in scripture that says we shouldn't get, gather together with friends and family. There's nowhere in scripture that says we shouldn't give one another gifts, and none of that's wrong. Okay? It's when those things are prioritized incorrectly that they become wrong. All right? So as we celebrate, and it's interesting because uh, in a lot of the world that celebrates Christmas, uh, the majority of people that are celebrating are not celebrating because of the son that was given in our place. They're celebrating because it's a day to celebrate. Um, and it's so funny because people get so upset saying, you know, uh, you know, the world is trying to take Jesus out of Christmas by saying happy holidays. I have no problem with happy holidays because holiday just means a holy day. Okay? So when somebody tells me happy holiday, my mind immediately goes to it's a holy day. Yeah, it's a holy day. We're celebrating the birth of our Savior. That should be holy. But then again, what day is not holy? You know, the second Tuesday of next week. Okay? So, I'm going to transition here. Uh, I need a, a couple of volunteers to come up here and assist me. Uh, Thaddeus. <laughs> James. Make sure everybody gets one of those. Not the big ones, just the ones. <laughs> They're all the same. Don't pick and choose. Just take it. <laughs> they are not edible. <laughs> the rest of you, if you, uh, would open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53, please. Everybody have one? Yes, I do. All right. As precious as a baby wrapped in swaddling and laying in a manger is, as, as astounding as the heavenly host appearing in the heavens and declaring his birth and sending the shepherds to celebrate, to witness, to bear witness, as, as amazing as the Magi in the East, uh, understanding from the writings, even more so than the Jews 
who, who initiated those writings, who, who uh, gave those to them, uh, understanding and, and coming out of the East following the star and bringing gifts, gifts fit for a king, uh, as tragic, uh, because we gotta remember, as amazing as his birth was, it also brought about the fulfillment of, of negative prophecy because uh, Rachel was weeping for her children because they are no more. When Herod heard where Jesus was born, where he was living, he sent his soldiers to kill every child, every male child, two years and under. Um, this is the nature of the, the, the promise that God has given us. It is such that the enemy of our souls will do anything he can to prevent us from attaining it, from receiving it. Okay? Um, now, each of us has a cross. Okay? Each of us has a cross. Because as amazing as the Christmas story is, uh, as amazing and, and incredible and inspiring as a Christmas story is, without the cross, it ultimately leads to nothing. Okay? Yeah, it would still be unique. Yeah, it would be pretty amazing that the angels would, would appear in the heavens, that the Magi would come and give, give gifts. But if it did not lead to the cross, that's all it is. A pretty cool holiday celebrating like one of the other saint days okay because the focus of our mind has got to be the gift wasn't even so much the baby as it is what that baby would do okay what that baby would would do on our behalf he was born for a specific <coughs> purpose okay so i'm just going to read through uh, isaiah chapter 53 and this is a weird passage to read for Christmas. But my hope is that when you understand the value of this gift, it will make Christmas that much more meaningful to you. All right? So we're going to read Isaiah 53. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days, the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. 
Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. <clears throat> 